Hello, my name is Jay, and welcome back to my tech vault. Today, I've got a fully um, working computer case made solely out of Legos. This has been a series we've been having on some time on my channel. And a big thing about today's special video, it is, is a completely mini ATX form factor. It fits dimensions of what you'd expect for one of these mini ATX kind of cases. It supports full length graphics cards. It has a full size power supply. It has a full size motherboard. It includes pretty much everything within a factor that's that big. So one of the biggest things I wanted to accomplish is I've had some two things. Number one, I wanted to make sure that everything looked good from all angles because some of the past builds that I've done of other computer cases, they haven't looked too good because you'd have parts hanging out or you'd have a graphics card popping out here. I wanted it all to look good good from every angle you looked at it it screamed Lego but it also screamed that it looked good now by doing this I wasn't going to go do some fancy intricate designs because simply there wasn't enough Legos in order to do one single color I'm thinking about doing some different designs maybe for the next build but the next build is going to be a fully working test bench that's actually going to be the goal of the next video the Lego computer case which I'll be breaking out some connects um, and some other stuff as well to make sure that it fully functions and at that point that's the goal of the next video if you want to know what's happening but pretty much this is just as I said a mini ATX case that includes full ATX components all in here all full size which basically fit into such a small size and if you want to know how much space these case makers are wasting this is a full example and this uses a f fully modular power supply to make sure that we had you know the wiring down to a you know minimum now obviously there was still a lot of pain in wiring because there's only so much room in this case and in order to make sure everything functioned properly you have to of course go through and make sure that you've done everything correctly and that you've got room for your wires. So I'm gonna jump to talk about some of the different components we've got in here, how I went around you know, supporting the airflow for them, and then also the, at the end of the video, I've got the time lapse. You can watch me building the whole thing, two different camera angles. Uh, I did it on a stream, and I like to, I kinda, it's kind of like a tradition now we stream these uh, when I'm building them because I get to talk with everybody. But I, of course, I time lapse it for you guys. If you didn't watch the stream, I'll, I'll, and I might um, see if I can post that as well. But this is, as I said, the final result. Um, so let's get into talking about the various components. So starting off, we've got this power supply. Now, one of the biggest things I wanted to make sure I accomplished is from the back of this power supply, one of the first designs we did is we had this problem because I completely misjudged what the back was for, and it wasn't for through output, it was for output output. So I had had this completely covered in the first LEGO computer case I ever built. And so I wanted to make sure, A, I didn't do that again, because one thing's for sure, power supplies don't thermal throttle. Um, so pretty much you had to, we, we finally went through and we made sure I had plenty of airflow room, etc. So the second problem we will also want to make sure we accomplished was to make sure we had no components hanging out, easily getting bumped, harmed, etc. Because the big thing about the, well, the second case we made is, and of course a little bit of the first one, actually the majority of the first one as well, is that components were hanging out, motherboard was hopping out, you bumped it, it was good, it looked really rickety. Um, so the second case we built had a lot of issues with sturdiness. It wasn't, you know, you felt like you could push on the top and I guess it wouldn't work. So I solved that problem by making the top a really strong, kind of not too dangerous to do. It's I feel like I could put some weight on it and not have any issues. That also is really sturdy. You can bump it, you can bump it around, shake it around, and you don't have any worry about it falling apart. Um, now, the reason why I didn't make some really nice fancy designs, the second build that I did was really nice and fancy, like design-wise, but it really wasn't that sturdy. I really wanted something that I could say was a case that wouldn't we could get knocked around, moved around, etc., without having to worry about you know it falling apart or you know you having to worry about your components getting harmed. So what I have the configuration on this is I've got the hard drive sitting over in the corner. Um, I mean, you probably have room for about another one, but also I want to make sure the graphics card has plenty of room to air because it's kind of important that airflow comes in from the front panel where all the I/O is. It comes in here and kind of situates out and it's taken in um, through the power supply and back out as well. As well, we also have a couple peripherated panels over here where the CPU cooler is so that it gets plenty of air also. So the other thing is I've got the motherboard on the bottom. 
Now you might be saying, well, why are you having the motherboard on the bottom and the power supply sitting up here? Well, one of the biggest things was you actually, with the stock cooler, you have a good bit of space on top where the graphics card sits. Now, I didn't, of course, put all the weight on the motherboard. That would have been stupid. I actually have a bunch of um, holding brackets holding this power supply up. So it all, not, almost just a little of the weight is actually on the motherboard, which is actually perfectly fine. And I've also got a lot of more brackets. So you really, it's not really any weight on the motherboard, but I really wanted to make sure that the power supply and everything was able to be fit in here because the biggest problem was the power supply was one of these case, one of these parts that you really can't you know, situate too well without making a whole nother level. You go through and you design the whole case and then you might need to put another label for the hard drive or another level for the power supply. And I was able to solve that by putting it all above the motherboard, which actually saves a good bit of space. And I'd recommend if you have the time and the Legos to go through and do this yourself if you're willing to put all ITX components in a mini ITX case. So finally, cable management. Now, this, you really can't do much with a case this small. There is no room whatsoever to even build that into your Lego case. So, one of the biggest things I went through and is I left a good bit of space back here to store wires. Now, cable management won't look pretty, but of course, at a case this size, you're not going to be necessarily worrying about what it looks like on the inside because you want it to be small and hopefully fit in another place as well. So, what I've went through in here is I did some extremely compact cable management and also had to make sure that the cables were tied in a way or looped around in a way that they wouldn't push on this back wall too much. There's a lot of pressure on Legos, as you know, is not a good thing. Bends them, it can cause some issues. And of course, you don't want to damage the Legos you already have. So, the other thing is I want to talk about the value, which you could get a case for this, you know, around this size, uh, if you wanted to get a case for you. So this is, if you wanted to do one single color, you're looking probably at 100 bucks, getting just solely going online, looking for individual bricks of blue Legos. Um, you could probably get 100 bucks for a Lego case, and if you knew how to build it, or you knew what you're looking for, you could go out and build it. If you want to do a different color, you could probably do that as well. If it's one of the yellow, red, or blue colors, those are just the most popular bricks. Anything past that, you might have to do a little bit of something special. Now, the next question you're probably wondering is, well, what if I wanted to, you know, not do a plain, just, you know, two-color design? That's perfectly fine as well. You just have to be able to accommodate that. If you wanted to build, like, I don't know, I would be really cool to make this, like, into a mountain, but you got to keep in mind that this is a base form factor. Like, you could build onto this so much easier. You could expand out. This is just a brick that you could pretty much build whatever you want on top of it, around it, etc. So I want you guys to be open-minded to the fact that this, yes, it doesn't look as pretty as some of the past ones I've done, but it does hold up as a case much better than any previous model that I've made. So I wanted to point this out because it's just so much, so much sturdier than I guess any other case that I've made so far. And that was what the big concern was for this video, not making something that looks extremely pretty because as a matter of fact, it's not really pretty to have components hanging out. So finally, I want to talk about the hard drive in the sense that I would change a couple things about. First of all, when you have plastic and you have a moving component that's writing and reading, it makes a lot of noise. It makes so much noise, as a matter of fact, that I can hear literally the like the movement of the disc and it, you know the rattling and the scratching on the disc. And I feel like if I were to change something, I'd get some Lego pieces that are rubber and I'd probably put them in here or I would get rubber bands and I'd put the hard drive on the rubber bands so that it doesn't rattle around so much. Because the big issue was it's a lot, no it's really noisy. The whole build itself is really quiet, like really, really quiet. I'm really happy how that was. But the biggest worry for me is the hard drive makes the most noise. Which, of course, is a moving component and it doesn't really cause any issues in normal cases because there's rubber to keep it from rattling around. But the big thing about this one is it just needs a little more, you know, DLC, put some rubber bands in there, and basically solve that problem. So I also want to talk about room for expansion. We've got a good bit of room. Arguably, I would say that we've got a lot of room for additional hard drives. We could do that. Um, we could do a bunch more SSDs, and this power supply supports a good bit. But I like the fact that we've got a lot of room in here to expand, getting more storage, etc. But this is all the components in the computer in a size that I would arguably say is very much mini ITX and you probably you had it been you know you built this as a mini ITX case you probably would have had a motherboard you probably would have had a power supply sitting over here hard drive over here and maybe an SSD or you know other components here and maybe you know graphics card but this thing includes graphics card it includes you know all the components to be a gaming computer so 
if you want to know what case manufacturers are cheating you out of, this is what you're looking at, extremely compact, um, all ATX component, micro ATX size. So, let's get into the time lapse, and of course, if you, this would be the moment I'd ask if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, didn't give it a thumbs down, sorry I wasn't able to uh, uh, please your uh, taste buds, um, but if you are interested in these lighter computer cases, this will be a series I'll be starting um, posting a little bit more regularly, uh, I plan on making a test bench, maybe tomorrow, and um, that's what you should expect. Also, I do a bunch of other tech stuff, budget PCs, etc., but this is the majority of what I like to do. So, um, thank you all for watching, and now let's get into the time lapse, shall we? Yeah.